It's once been said that if we don't remember the past, we're doomed to repeat it. But what if remembering puts us on a whole different level of trust? Let's explore that idea together. Welcome to worship here at Round Hill Community Church. My name is Shannon White. I'm the pastor for spiritual development here at Round Hill. We're so glad that you've come to join us here for this online worship experience, the first Sunday of Lent, a period of around 40 days plus weekends where we take time to reflect and examine our lives so that we can clear out whatever separates us from God before we celebrate the resurrection at Easter. There are lots of opportunities for engagement in fellowship and worship and service over this period of Lent. Please go online at roundhillcommunitychurch.org and you can find those ways, including on March 17th, we'll be doing a Church World Services packing event, but we need, we need different materials that you can order online and send to the church so that we may pack those things. So please go online and check that out. In addition, the Easter flower dedication um, are being taken currently at the church office, so please call in if you'd like to have flowers dedicated on Easter. And an opportunity for fellowship if you're in town, please come to our spring fling on Saturday, March 9th at 6 p.m. at the community house. We're looking forward to welcoming all of you here for that event. You can get, again can sign up online. Let us worship God. Let us pray. As in days of old creator God, we come to look for your signs of covenant promises. Like the rainbow days of Noah, we see and know your signs and hear your voice again, directing us to places of preparation and transformation in our lives and in our world. Thank you God for your covenant signs in this season of Lent, amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Task on earth is done when my 
Listen now for God's word from Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. It's a familiar story, so perhaps take a moment to see if you can hear it with fresh ears and new eyes. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants, after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is in, in between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So let me ask you a question. How are you doing? It's a common question, and many times we automatically, reflexively say, oh, I'm fine. It's so easy to say it's almost automatic. But when Sesame Street's beloved character Elmo asked that question on X, formerly called Twitter, last month on January 29th, he and many others got an earful. In fact, 180 million people responded that they are, in fact, not okay. Those responses invited curious newscasters to interview the Red Children's Star out of Sesame Workshop and ask Elmo how Elmo was doing after having heard so many, including the Detroit Free Press, which replied, we've been better, Elmo. That was after experiencing the Detroit Lions' loss in the playoffs to your average Joe saying, I'm depressed and broke, to even reps from Oreo cookies saying, ran out of milk, do the math. <laughs> we may think of this question almost as funny, but the reality is many around us and away from us, maybe even you are feeling that everything is not okay in one way or another. Preparing for this sermon has been kind of an interesting experience. This was one of those times, and every preacher has them, when I had the whole idea laid out. In fact, I had three quarters of the sermon written, and all of a sudden, I looked at it again, and I said, oh, no, this is not right for this time. And so I put it aside. It just didn't feel right, and so I started again. How inconvenient, God. <laughs> Just when I was trying to get things wrapped up uh, with my schedule to go away for this past week and be here for my last two weeks with you, the Spirit nudged me in another way. That other sermon will have to wait for another day. It all started when I read a Facebook post from a colleague and signed up for a weekly interfaith prayer service online, which began on February 1st and will continue through Inauguration Day of 2025. It's a nonpartisan call for people of all faiths, acknowledging that no one tradition is sufficient, to come and center and to be still with open hearts and time of tremendous national upheaval. I was especially drawn to the first evening, the first of these many, many weeks, because the leader was the Reverend Dr. James Forbes, pastor emeritus of Riverside Church in New York City. 
whom I've met and heard multiple times, and he has such wisdom. This gathering is a deeply spiritual interfaith practice. As Dr. Forbes said, quote, God can be strategic in forcing us all to search for insight and truth in places we least wish to go. None of us has the whole truth, he says, so we must create an inclusive spiritual community in order to find the insights we seek. That hooked me. It acted as a call together as a very diverse community to remember God's faithfulness. We don't usually refer to it here, but our scripture text is one of the lectionary texts for today that I chose for this sermon. I was so curious as to why the story of Noah and the ark and the covenant with God made with humanity following the flood would be one of the texts for the first week of Lent. Of course, we all know this story. The people had sinned for generations, and to make things right, Noah and his family were chosen to build an ark gather the animals two by two in order to be saved from the flood which covered the earth. It's kind of a devastating story. Destroying everything the earth had on it. But after the storm, the survivors witnessed the rainbow that God used as a symbol of promise of the covenant of God that God made with God's people that never again would the earth be destroyed. If we take a step back and look at the entirety of scripture, we begin to see that the scriptures as a whole are a collection of covenants that God has made with God's beloved. Promises to us. God has formed a series of covenants with humanity. Now simply put, a covenant is a promise with obligations. God's covenants with us contain the nature of God's promise of relationship, to be our God and we, God's people. In the covenants in the scriptures, God makes unbreakable promises to be faithful to God's people. From covenants with Adam and Noah, to Abraham and Sarah, to Moses and David, all in the Hebrew scriptures, through the to the new covenant in Jesus Christ, we see God's faithfulness expressed in covenants. The stories form a thread, if you will, a continual storyline of faithfulness across thousands of years. And we need to remember. When looking at the entirety of the biblical story, we can see that even when people like you and me have strayed away from God, God was always and continues to always be faithful and present, always calling us back to God's self. We all have experienced human beings, on the other hand, who have at some point disappointed us in some way, because that's what human beings do, even sometimes without meaning to. Consider this. Have you been disappointed by a promise someone made to you at some point in your life? I have. And how has that affected the way you see other people? Or perhaps how you view life? Or perhaps even God? Consider that question. Conversely, what promise or promises made by someone else have proved to be reliable? And how has such reliability impacted the way you live? Still, God is consistently faithful to all of the covenants God has made. And if that is the case, and we trust God to deliver on those promises, then our lives are set on a different course, aren't they? It doesn't preclude doubt and deep questions when we are faced with difficulties in life. But remembering and trusting that God is faithful is key. The words of Julian of Norwich, a fantastic saint of the 14th century, a mystic, come to mind. Maybe you've heard these words. And all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all matter of thing shall be well. 
Julian, a Roman Catholic nun, sought God with her whole heart. At a young age, she became deathly ill and sought last rites commonly practiced in the Roman Catholic Church before one physically dies. She and those around her thought her earthly life ending was imminent. And given what she thought was her state, she prayed earnestly for a clear vision of Christ's suffering. Out of that, she had what have been called a near-death experience. And between four and nine that night, she had what were called 16 showings, or visions, revelations, if you will, of Christ showing her some truth, including a covenantal assurance of those beautiful and hopeful words, which have become a chant for so many through the ages. And all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all matter of thing shall be well. She said this, in my folly before this time, I often wondered why, by the great foreseeing wisdom of God, the onset of sin was not prevented. For then, I thought, all shall have been well. The impulse of thought was much to be avoided, but nevertheless, I mourned and sorrowed because of it, without reason and discretion. But Jesus, who is this vision, in, informed me of all that is needed by me, answered with these words and said, it was necessary that there should be sin, but all shall be well, and all shall be well, and all matter of thing shall be well. These words, she said, were said most tenderly, showing no manner of blame to me nor to any who should be saved. In this, she recognizes the compassion that she's prayed for, She's impressed with her need to be joyful in all circumstances, however adverse, and for no particular reason except this, that all things shall ultimately put, be put right by Christ. That's from the book Showings, which I read during seminary. Miraculously, Julian would go on to live 33 more years and to spread the hope of the covenantal words she received, even in the midst of thinking she was on the verge of death. I think this passage, whether the Julian passage or the scripture passage, calls on us to remember God's continued faithfulness through all generations. How does the knowledge of God remembers is good and well as in harrowing times impact us? Perhaps that's something for us to consider during this Lenten period. We in the church and in the West particularly often think of this period called Lent as a solitary call to go inside and reflect on our own spiritual journeys personally. This text calls us to reflect not only personally, but as a community on how we might respond and act with the knowledge that God's faithfulness continues spurring us on to welcome others, to be reconcilers, and to remember God's faithfulness and covenant with us always. May it be so. Alleluia. Amen. Can't see it, but it
During this period of February, our What Matters Most word is justice. And I've chosen a prayer that I found by Rabbi Harold Kushner. Many of you may know his name. And I pray this prayer on behalf of all of us called Prayer for the World. Let us pray. Let the rain come and wash away the ancient grudges, the bitter hatreds held and nurtured over generations. Let the rain wash away the memory of the hurt, the neglect. Then let the sun come out and fill the sky with rainbows. Let the warmth of the sun heal us wherever we are broken. Let it burn away the fog so that we can see each other clearly, so that we can see beyond labels, beyond accents, gender, or skin color. Let the warmth and brightness of the sun melt our selfishness so that we can share the joys and feel the sorrows of our neighbors. And let the light of the sun be so strong that we will see all people as our neighbors. Let the earth, nourished by rain, bring forth flowers to surround us with beauty. And let the mountains teach our hearts to reach upward to heaven. Amen. And let us pray together the words of the Round Hill Community Church prayer. Our Heavenly Father, shed forth thy blessed spirit upon all our lives. Make each one of us an instrument in thy hands for good. Purify our hearts, strengthen our minds and bodies, fill us with Christian love. Let no pride, no self-conceit, no rivalry, no ill will ever spring up among us. Make us earnest and true, wise and prudent, giving no just cause for offense. And may thy holy peace rest upon us this day and every day throughout the coming week, sweetening our trials, cheering us in our work, and keeping us faithful to the end. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Go forth from here, my brothers and sisters, remembering the covenants that God has made, not only with us, but throughout the generations, and live your lives based on that knowledge. May the blessing of God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer be with each and every one of us now and forevermore. Amen. As you carry the spirit of this worship experience with you, there are a few things that you can do that would make a big difference to us. Like the video, subscribe if you aren't, and click the notification bell and select all. Thank you.